think I probably started thinking about it during, I was running the Opera House in Sydney in 2000, no, no, 1998, and, you know, that period leading up to the Olympics you know, was challenging and exciting and then running the Opera House through the, the Olympics and you know, the Olympics itself, itself, I think had probably sort of switched me on to the idea that I might like to do something somewhere else and if I didn't do it now, I turned 50 during the Olympics too, so it was sort of one of those you know, critical moments, I guess, where you start to think about it. I'd been at school here for a year when I was 14, and I'd only ever then spent you know, relatively short periods of time in London. I never did the big cavalcade you know, through the 60s or the 70s or the 80s or even the 90s. And it was at that point where you know, I think I'd probably reached the point in Australia that you know, I you know, was doing, you know, I'd had you know, a whole lot of great jobs and but you know, it was the time I probably felt somewhat distant from what was going on politically and otherwise. And you know, I started to think about it and you know, I was talked to, you know, they went round the world looking for people for this job and a few others. And I was, um, I'd been in you know, America at the, about the time that I was due to come here to talk to them about this, talking about something else. And, I just, it was not long after 9-11, and I thought, do I really want to live in America at this point in my life? And I decided, no, I didn't. And you know, they came here and they offered me the job here. And so, you know, three months later, I found myself here. You know, I'd had you know, what I thought were fantastic jobs back to back in Australia, in organisations that I cared about and an industry that I cared about. And, you know, it's sort of the seduction of, of Sydney had worked on me for, you know, most of my life. You know, I was a very hawkish um, Sydney cider and, you know, very, you know, sort of very sort of almost jingoistic Australian who had probably to some extent lost a bit of sense of, you know, what, where the real, you know, what was going on in the, the bigger world because I was, you know, reasonably content and satisfied and, and challenged by, you know, the other things I was doing. I guess if we look back at our roots, you know, large numbers of us came from here or roundabouts. You know, my first relations came from Ireland in 1793 on a convict ship. So from my point of view, you know, coming, you know, coming back to see it, I think you know, whatever way you were doing it was, you know, there's something in the blood, whether it be Irish, Welsh or English, of which you know, there's a bit of, of all of it in me. Um, I think we've always been inquisitive and, you know, and we've always, you know, I think we're quite interesting in, you know, if we compare ourselves to Americans who, you know, like to stay in their own place, despite the fact they come, you know, from a big country. You know, we come from a big country, but I think we do actually, you know, want to see what's happening in the world. Why did, you know, why, in, in terms of the other thing, you know, in taking on those tasks, you know, I think we're always a country that, you know, is punched pretty much above its weight in lots of ways. You know, we do it sport, we do it, you know, on all sorts of, you know, other areas. You know, we do it in film, we do it in, you know, the arts generally. And, you know, we seem to do it in a whole lot of other areas. And, you know, I think we are competitive. I think we, you know, if we... And we also, I think, work in a time frame that says, you know, if it's taken 10 years, you know, for someone to do something, you know, we are probably impatient in some ways and, and so we try and compress that time frame and you know, I suppose my life has really been marked out in you know, five year chunks for you know, most of the last you know, 25 years and in five years I've sort of set myself you know, the, the period of time in which you know, I'd take on a task and then you know, get on and think about doing something else and it probably is a, a nice way of narrowing um, the idea that you know, people determine your future for you rather than you determining your own future. And I think we're quite good about that, but I don't think we're as obsessed as you know, they are in this country about you know, security of tenure or you know, staying in a place for a long period of time. Um, I, I think the thing that probably you know, I thought I'd hate most about it was you know, the misery and the grey and the, the cold and the wet. And after five years, you know, it, it has almost no impact on me. And some, some of the time I you know, feel quite... You know, snow is you know, one of those things that I first saw as a kid when I was here and 14. And you know, most of the years I've been here, I've at least had a, you know, the snow falling. And, and you know, the ice, I think, was... You know, so those few days, 
um, were you know, sort of not ideal. Um, but you know, it's, it's probably too crowded. You know, that's the thing that, you know, the fact that you have to hassle to get everything. I went back to Australia at Christmas time and in five minutes I got a driver's licence which I'd been trying for months to get here and I was still able to get to the wine shop and have lunch within you know, this compressed hour. And so I think that's the frustrations of living in a very big city, you know, whether it be here or anywhere else. Um, no, but I think they're counterbalanced by you know, an extraordinary range of you know, both the things that I'm actually doing um, in terms of the job and you know, the opportunities that provides you. And you know, for someone who's working in the, the arts business, you know, there is no question that you know, the balance in the world has so much shifted, you know, in, particularly in the last you know, sort of 10 years, where you know, London on just about every front is it's so exciting and you, know, you can see and do and hear and you know, observe just about anything you'd you know, ever possibly want. Things that I'd spent years you know, waiting to see or trying to see or trying to produce or bring to Australia. You know, I've, you know, the, the riches of that experience have been you know, fantastic. So I've been able to make up in many ways for 20 or 30 years of things that I you know, hadn't seen before. Um, and you know, I, I suppose what I really like about you know, sort of doing this job in London is that you know, sort of um, being a, an old Kinks fan, you know, being able to look out over Waterloo you know, Bridge and you know, sort of have a venue called Waterloo Sunset. You know, it's just it's such a beautiful part of the city. And I suppose you know, my other passion in life has always been politics, so I can look out that way um, you know, to the mother of all parliaments. And you know, from my point of view, it's you know, just you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privilege to be able to do what I'm doing, but it's a great place to be you know, able to do it. When I first came here in, I was doing something here, bringing Australian arts groups to Australia in the um, late 90s. And every time I went on television, um, they used to juxtapose, because I was working for the Australia Council, for the Australian government, and they used to um, always juxtapose me with Les Patterson. And it used to piss me off big time that, you know, sort of, here's Michael Lynch, you know, the, you know, the modern day Les Patterson. And you know, that used to, you know, re irritated me immensely, you know, in terms of what we were trying to say, because we had, I think, important statements about Australia at that point. You know, we had some really important indigenous work and we had really good, you know, international competitive work. Um, it was interesting when I came here in 2002, no one has ever, I think the perceptions of what Australia is and where it is and you know, where it sits, no one's ever mentioned it to me again. And that was only you know, in a five year period that you know, that turned around. I think being Australian you know, in this town has been a huge advantage. You know, I don't perceive you know, any degree of, of disadvantage because I think they you know, have expectations that we, will, you know, that we will compete, that we will try, that we will you know, cut around a lot of the bullshit, you know, that we're not going to play you know, the normal game. And you know, there's, we, we, can, we can't see the upside in you know, playing a lot of the games and you know, doing things the way you know, the British themselves might do it. We all probably owe you know, some um, kudos to Warney for, you know, I think, the fact that you know, anyone who's led such an appalling public humiliating life over the last few years that still stands tall in the eyes of the English. They, they love him and so I think it probably gives us an extraordinary amount of license in terms of what, you know, that you may make the odd mistake or you may sound you know, different to others and you didn't go to the right school or the right university. But I think, um, no, I think that the attitudes you know, towards the place and towards Australians have changed dramatically, probably more so in the last five years than at any period that you know, I can recall. And you know, it's partly because you know, we, can do, you know, we can do two things. You know, we can you know, sort of be you know, sort of obnoxious on, you know, at some points, but you know, very competent at others. And you know, I think you know, we're probably a curious mix in regard to you know, national psyche. You know, as a people, you know, you know, I think it's now impossible to generalise about them in the same way it's you know, quite difficult to generalise about us. And you know, I work in a, you know, a broad range of you know, people from 
you know, across the country, but also across the world. And you no, know, I don't. You no, know, I don't. You know, I actually, I've, I've, been, I've enjoyed the experience of actually being here and working with people. Um, I think it's more in, you know, the, I think there are some particular issues that you know, uh, make it quite difficult. You know, they, you know, they are probably much more regulated than I expected them. And, you know, the layers of control over you know, what you have to do and you know, the things that you know, government sticks its oar in on. You know, which I think, you know, that if I want to electrocute myself in the bathroom, I should be allowed to do it. You know, sort of rather than being told you can't have a PowerPoint in a bathroom unless it's for a, you know, electric razor. You know, I, I find that level of intrusion in the same way in doing the job. You know, sometimes we've had to deal with. I, I got a document when I first arrived here, and you know, saying you know, who my key stakeholders were in terms of the people I'd have to work with, and there were 58 of them. Know, on the first list, and I sort of thought, you know, I'll never be able to do anything else if I have to spend you know, that degree of time. So there are you know, many. You know, there, there's a lot of frustrations, but you know, I, you know, I, I think one of the good things that you know, we bring to you know, working and living here is that um, you know, it's sort of quite interesting debates about you know, how things are going to change. And I remember talking to the Olympic people before you know, sort of they won the bid. And I said, you know, you'll never be able to do it unless you, know, you, you look at some of the, the ways that you approve things and plan things and, and get things done. You, know, you need, you know, in Australia they, or in New South Wales, when they were doing the Olympics, they just gave them a piece of legislation which said effectively the tanks could you know, run over anybody if it meant it had anything to do with the Olympics. And I think you know, it would be very interesting to see you know, sort of what they... You know, how you know, some of the debates still going on you know, in the pre-Olympic period, how they you know, will have to actually you know, short circuit you know, their normal long-winded, slow way of getting things done. And I guess you know, this project's been exactly the same. It was around for you know, 10 years and they still hadn't done it. And so you know, from my point of view, in making a judgment as to you know, whether I could succeed or not, I looked at it and thought, well, you know, that must be about the lowest point. You know, from here, you know, our view would be, you know, sort of, you, you must be able to make things better out of it. Do I still consider myself Australian? Absolutely. No, I, I will always, you know, no matter what happens and when I go back or, you know, whatever else happens to me. You know, it, it, it's what I am. I think I'm well past my prime and I don't um, feel any guilt about having left it. I gave, uh, in my view, I gave... 52 years of um, good service to Australia and um, you know, the fact that I've been away for five is you know, I think you know, quite reasonable and if I stay away a few more um, you know, I'll be you know, very happy to you know, then be able to contribute if they're still looking for 60 year olds to contribute in Australia. I think I probably disagreed with Hugh Morgan on anything he ever said over just about every issue over you know, our respective periods of life on earth. So it, I, I don't agree with him. I, no, I think I can you know, clearly call London home you know, for the period that I'm here, but you know, my kids, my family, my friends you know, largely are still in Australia and you know, I will always you know, feel you know, that every morning I go on to the Australian websites before I go on to the English websites. So you know, I live in both places, you know, but I still call Australia home.